blood is the, really the road map to, to our life. Everything that we eat every day either gets digested and broken down and utilized on a cellular level as nutrition, or it doesn't get digested and it goes into our bloodstream and it's like a waste or toxin, okay? That builds up and becomes cholesterol or plaque or all these other things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the blood so we understand it, so when we actually pull up the blood later, you'll, you'll understand what you're kind of seeing. Uh, we're gonna tie this into to digestion and enzymes and the whole thing. There's really four things that we need to focus on that we can't live without. One is oxygen, two is water, you know, we gotta be hydrated. Third one is probiotics, and the most important really is enzymes, okay? You think of enzymes versus oxygen, you know? How could that be more important than oxygen? You're actually born with over 4,000 different kinds of enzymes in your body, okay? Every reaction, when you blink your eye, that's triggered by an enzyme reaction, okay? You also get enzymes from foods that you eat. Those are called food enzymes. So, like for instance, if you took a bite of an apple and the phone rings, so you set your apple down on the table and you know, 30 minutes later or 10 minutes later, you come back to get your apple and it's turned brown, okay? That's the actual enzymes occurring and that's processing it. We call that rotting or spoiling, okay? When it mixes with the oxygen, it oxidizes and the enzymes go to work and everything. Uh, but once we cook something, the enzymes have, uh, are destroyed in that food, okay? Um, so then we call on our pancreas, and our pancreas is our little enzyme bank account. But uh, we'll, I'm not going to jump forward yet. We'll come back to that. But let's talk a little bit about the blood. So see this picture right here in the center of the blood cells, okay? You have red blood cells in your body. You have white blood cells. Just under that, you see all these different white blood cells. So you have neutrophils, eosinophils, lymphocyte, I mean, uh, lymphocytes, monocytes, and then just a, on the other side, basophils, okay? Each one has a different job to do. Red blood cells live about 120 days, 120 days in the body. Every 20 seconds, a red blood cell, all a red blood cell is, is like a little dump truck. Okay, and it's hauling loads of oxygen all day long, every day. Every 20 seconds, it's gonna pick up another load of oxygen, go drop it off, carry back some carbon dioxide, drop it off, pick up some more oxygen, okay? And so it's making this little cycle. Um, white blood cells, so red cells live 120 days, white cells only live five days, okay? Each one has a different function too. You have neutrophils that are, are your main cleanup guys, okay? If you, if you start to get an infection or you, you uh, have too much sugars or fats or different things in your blood, the white blood cells, the neutrophil is the one that's gonna go clean it up. So it's like a little garbage man that's, that's moving around the blood. It's kinda like one of those little sweepers at the bottom of the pool. It just kinda vacuums up the walls and everything. That's what the neutrophils do. The basophils, over here on this side, they sense that the blood is getting too thick kind of like this top two pictures up here on top. So when the blood is really thickening up and sticking together, we, we can't, that, they can't work if they're that way. So the blood release, this white blood cell releases a chemical thinner, like heparin, which is an anticoagulant, so it thins the blood. So it's like, almost like taking an aspirin a day that people, the doctors tell you to take, to thin the blood. That's kind of what he's trying to do. Eosinophils, we're back over on this other side. Eosinophils work on like allergies and so on. And again, all these things we're talking about are in the, open them up, open up this thing and you'll see they're in, in, the, in the brochure. Uh, lymphocytes and monocytes, those are more used for more like cancers and major conditions in the body, okay? When, when things are really major problems, that's when these guys come, come into play, okay? But going back to the red cells, let's talk about the red cells again. So here, let's say that this is a red blood cell, okay? Again, a red blood cell is 7.2 microns in size. Normal or ideal, this, every single cell, cell should be the exact same size, like a cookie cutter, you're punching them out, you know, exactly the same size. When the heart is pumping the blood out of the top of the heart, it leaves in a huge artery called the aorta, right? 
and that then that branches off into smaller arterioles, and then that branches off again into billions of tiny little capillaries. Capillaries are headed to every little point of your body. If, if these were capillaries and I could stick all the capillaries in your body together in one long line, it would circle the world twice in just your body. Then the size of a capillary is only three to four microns. Well, this is seven microns. See how much larger it is than the opening of that capillary? So once a red cell, you know, reaches a capillary, a red cell has to kind of squeeze down to get through. That forces it to rubble against the walls of the capillary. And the oxygen that is, like if this was the lung, all this is the lung, and you have these little air sacs in the lung, the oxygen from these air sacs are leaving, and so as, as the capillaries are passing all over the top of the lung, as they rub along the capillary walls, they draw the oxygen into that cell every 20 seconds for 120 days. That's key. And what holds the oxygen inside the cell what makes a cell look real bright and solid like this is a thing called hemoglobin. We need the cell to be separate. We need it to be full of hemoglobin. Then they can, then that's able to do its job. They're able to get through. It's kind of like throwing a basketball in a hoop. You know, one ball fits one at a time, but several in the same time, they won't fit. Okay, um, so they need to go in one at a time. That's key right here. Um, we, we end up losing a lot of hemoglobin. Um, you'll see right next to it, right here, it's called a target cell, okay? That's where the cell is actually starting to get real white. Let's say, um, you women, when you have your menstrual cycle, you'll lose a lot of hemoglobin for a couple of days, you know, in these cells. Um, so, all of a sudden, for two or three days, you can't, you, you can't carry any oxygen to the body, so you're going to get a headache. You're going to get cramps, you know, menstrual cramps. You're going to you're going to see that. You're going to have to be, be more tired, fatigued. Okay, you see, and that's what this is saying. See, if you turn to target cells, see red blood cells that have lost their capabilities to carry oxygen, will cause symptoms of low energy, lethargy, tiredness, and so on. Okay, when our body is too stressed, like a physical stress or an emotional stress, maybe works really tough this week, or school, or, or maybe you had a death in the family. You know, those are emotional stresses. <clears throat> maybe it's a physical stress. Maybe, um, you know, you, you've uh, been working out too hard, pounding away at the gym every day. See, that's a physical stress, okay? That'll draw hemoglobin. The third thing that will draw the hemoglobin from the cell is when our body gets overheated, like we're working out in the yard, mowing the lawn, or we're sitting out by the pool, or, or um, we're at the gym on the treadmill, or something like that. See, these kind of things draw the hemoglobin, and it just keeps getting more deficient and more deficient, and now you feel it. You, you wonder, why am I so tired all the time? You know, and most of the time it's because of this. Okay, and another reason that it could be is Every time we, we eat, like I was saying in the beginning, any time we eat foods, okay, and that food comes into our stomach, if it's not digested, let's say we've got some fats all, you know, we had some french fries or some fried chicken in it or something. See, if this is fat, you know, if I don't digest that oil or that butter, see, it was cooked, that fried chicken was cooked, so that fat is not alive, it has no enzymes. So it's coming into my blood, and it, it can't get digested. So if I don't process this in a few hours, this fat is going to start being stored in my arteries as plaque. Okay? If it doesn't get processed, or it, be, or it becomes my love handle, you know, and I get little little low uh, fats, you know, on my side and stuff. Okay? If it's let's say it's sugar, you know, and I got all this undigested sugar. Uh, you know, let's say you had a, a treat tonight, you had some ice cream and stuff like that. See, and the sugar doesn't get digested. The sugar stay in the blood and they start to really start to bind our platelets together. And platelets actually form a clot, okay? See, this is in your picture right here, it's the first picture on the second row. It's called platelet aggregation. You see that? So platelets, see how much larger that platelet aggregation is than the, than the little red cell that it's sitting next to. So if I have a clot, 
And let's say that this was in my arm or my leg, and see, and it's supposed to be carrying oxygen down to my foot, and then it hits the sugars, okay? And it's starting to build up, starting to build up. Now it's blocked. See, now my red cells can't get oxygen to there. The heart's going to have to really get some pressure behind it to blow it through. You know, when we walk around with high blood pressure every day, and we wonder, why am I having to take Coumadin or Lipitor or something for this high blood pressure? You know, when you should be taking some enzymes to get rid of the sugar that it's actually causing. The, the, the statin drugs just move it around a little bit more, okay? If, if, if I, it's kind of like going to the Dairy Queen and getting a big old strawberry milkshake, and you drive off and everything's really good, and you're enjoying that strawberry shake until a big strawberry hits the end of the straw. Now, now you either have to really suck it up or, or blow it back out the other end, right? Well, that's what your heart's having to do. So if you have high blood pressure, you have outbound blockage. If you have low blood pressure, that's the track back to the heart, the venules, the veins, okay? So that's the diastolic pressure, systolic, diastolic, okay? So either way, you've got problems. So how do we get rid of the problems? See, here's your stomach and your intestines going on down. You have different layers to the stomach wall, okay? Well, right on the very top layer, right inside the stomach and also right through the intestinal tract, you have that little top layer, and that's called the mucosa lining or mucosa membrane. This little lining is made up of our good bacteria. Okay? So good bacteria comes into the body. You have these little villi on the stomach, little hairy things, okay? And the, the good bacteria comes in and it kind of embeds itself into that villi there. And once it's planted itself in, then it can grow and spread out. It's kind of like a vine on a wall. Once it's hooked, you know, it'll spread out and cover the entire wall. Well, this can cover the entire, you know, layer of your stomach. So this becomes your immune system, okay? It becomes your protection from anything that comes into the stomach, okay? And so we have this another couple of names for good bacteria. Sometimes you hear it's called our good friendly flora, or the most common is called probiotics, okay? Okay, so these are the three names. That's most common for that. So, see, whenever we eat food now, okay, here comes here comes our food in here. Okay, it it either comes in to our body in a raw form, like we were talking about in, in the beginning. So, anytime I eat something raw, or I have to eat that food cooked. Okay, and that is anything that I eat that's cooked over 118 degrees. When, whenever I eat something raw, it has those, what's called food enzymes. Okay? So food enzymes mean, enzymes are what digest or breaks the food down. Okay? Um, so a food enzyme, you know, like I'm saying an apple, if I eat an apple, set it down, it turns brown. That's the enzymes actually eating it. If you had a piece of, of raw hamburger sitting on the table, you know, and you know, you got called away, somebody uh, had an accident or something, so you call, got called away and you know, maybe six, seven, eight hours later, you come back to your house and there's that hamburger meat sitting on the counter and it's all brown and, and you know, that's the enzymes actually eating it. But see, if I cook it, how long do you think that that hamburger would actually last? You know, being in a cook form. Here's here's a little bit. This this hamburger is pretty famous. This has been all over the world here. This hamburger I bought on February 19, 1999. So this is over 13 years old. Okay, that's a 13 year old hamburger right there. There's 13 year old hamburger patty. Absolutely done nothing to it. It's been sitting on my desk for that long. Never, we'll make this a hamburger coming in here. Okay, we'll turn this into a hamburger. Here's, here comes my hamburger. Obviously, I cooked it. I didn't want to eat it raw. And so, whenever I eat this cooked hamburger and it comes in here, see, I've already taken away the enzymes. So, it has no way to process. And so, if you look on that page that I, that I sent around, right underneath the stomach here, you have a little... Thing called the pancreas okay think of your pancreas as like a little ATM machine at the bank 
When, when you're little, you're, you're born into this world with a lot of enzymes, okay? And let's go through some of these enzymes. These are called our digestive or metabolic enzymes. If you look at your little page right here, okay? See, you'll see going through here, up at the top here, you see at the top of the pyramid on the left, um, this is called lipase. Okay, lipase is an enzyme that breaks down fats, oils, and butters. So when you eat that little french fries or fried chicken or something like that, you have to, see, it's cooked, so you're going to have to go to the ATM machine, the bank, and take a withdrawal to come in and process that hamburger. See, if it came in raw, like a, an olive oil or avocado or raw almonds or, you know, things like that. See, it's got, already got enzymes. It digests on its own. But anything you eat cooked, see, the raw fats are called essential fats or omega fats. A cooked fat is called a trans fat. Okay? You need good fats to get rid of your bad fats. Um, so the good fats have lipase in it, so it digests itself. The next one right under that is called lactase. Lactase digests your dairy foods. So anytime you have some ice cream or some milk or some cheese, you need lactase to process that. So you come to the bank and take some, some enzymes from that. Right under that is amylase that takes care of all your uh, carbohydrates and uh, starches and sugars and so on. Okay. The very bottom, cellulase. See, it, it'll take care of your grains and your starches and your seeds and things like that. And then the one that's hardest to digest over here on the right, that's called protease. That breaks down our protein food. So meat, beans, nuts, eggs. You know, when I eat those kind of things, you feel more gassy and bloaty and stuff. That's because it's the hardest to process. But that's the enzyme that would do it. So, again, we take, take, take until pretty much... By the time we get about halfway through life, our bank account starts to run out. Whatever you're born with, that's all you get. A lot of people think we have an unlimited supply, okay? But let's say you all of a sudden run out of lactase enzyme. So you, yesterday you enjoyed some milk and ice cream that didn't give you any problem. But today you had a big old bowl of ice cream and you get gassy and bloaty. So you have no more enzymes to get from. So from now till you die, you're called lactose intolerant because you run out of lactase enzyme. If you run out of the enzyme that breaks down sugar, you're a diabetic the rest of your life. Okay? See, our grandparents, they didn't used to get lactose intolerant because they all drank milk right from the cow. You know? They all had a cow in the barn. It was raw milk. It, didn't, it would spoil, you know? But today, everything is pasteurized. It's coming in here without any enzymes. See, so our kids are becoming lactose intolerant in their teens instead of way later in their life. Sugars. We used to become diabetics when we were 50, 60, 70 years old. Today, we're becoming diabetics in our teenage years again because we go to the bank too much. Seven years ago, the average American diet was 70 pounds of sugar a year. Just a few months ago, now it's up to 195 pounds of sugar a year. Okay. Don't you think we're going to the bank account quite a bit more? You know, so we're going to run that thing out pretty soon, pretty quick. So let's go through a little digestion process of this hamburger. Here, here comes the hamburger into my stomach. The pancreas just doesn't automatically start shooting in health, okay? It has to have, go through a little processing first. The first thing that happens is the minute that food's touching my tongue, my body's already saying, it's cooked or it's raw. You know, if it's, if it's cooked, my body will start to secrete a little, it's called hydrochloric acid, okay, in my stomach. And the acids start to build up, okay? And the acids have two functions. The, the first function of this acid, the reason it's there, is when, when we eat, we also bring in bad bacteria with that foods. You know, maybe you didn't wash your salad, your lettuce, very good. See, a little salmonella, a little E. coli, little H. pylori bad bacteria enters the body, okay? So, if this bad bacteria comes into the stomach here, without this acid, the acid actually gets rid of some of this bad bacteria so I don't get sick, okay? The, the good bacteria actually try to come in and help out too. So, this is our two immune first line of defense right there. 
The second most important thing that the acid's there for is to change the pH of my stomach. Okay, so once once the pH reaches a certain level, now my pancreas is like an alarm goes off, and the enzymes are brought in here to digest the hamburger. Okay, if that all happens, you're, you made it. The food goes to the body on a cellular level. If if you do something to slow this process down, let's say you have a little bit of too much water with your meal. The waiter just keeps filling up your cup. Every time you turn around, he's already filling you back up. Well, that dilutes this, okay? I don't know if any of you traveled over to China or Korea before, but they'll give you a little teacup full of warm water. That's all you get for your whole meal. You'll never see a big old cup of water. You'll never see ice water, you know? But you can wash your palate down a little bit, but the more water you actually drink with your meal, the more it's slowing down your meal, okay? You can drink it for 30 minutes before or after. You want to stay hydrated. Remember, that's one of the four things. But we don't want to stop or slow down digestion. The second thing we do not want to do is drink something carbonated with our meal. Okay? Anytime we, we drink something carbonated, that has that we call that the three banditos, the three robbers of, of life, okay? Carbonic acid is very acidic, okay? Think about it. When you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen. When you breathe out, what do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide. When you drink a soda, what are you putting in? Carbon dioxide. Your body doesn't want that, okay? It's poison to the body. So the other thing is carbonic acid, when it mixes with the hydrochloric acids, it actually neutralizes itself. So the carbonation takes away the acids. So if I take away the acid, the, bacteria, the pH won't get changed. That leaves the bad bacteria there, because that's what got rid of it, okay? So number one, it takes away that. Number two is it would kill any of the enzymes that were, let's say you have a salad or something raw, you know, it takes away that, it destroys the enzymes. And the worst thing is number three, the third, the third bandito is it destroys your good bacteria. It starts to create little cracks in this lining, okay? So now the bad bacteria that's left, it can get through the crack, and if it gets to my stomach wall, now, now I've got an ulcer in my stomach. Now I've got a, a sore going on here, okay? Drinking soda every day. Another thing that will cause us to destroy this this lining is stress. Okay. See, so that that'll actually open it up too. See, so you go to your doctor now and you say, Doc, man, I'm just really in some pain here. I've got some this thing. I don't know what's going on. So he checks you out. Yeah, you got an ulcer. You know, um, I can fix that. See this this bacteria caused this. So I oh, let me fix that. I'm going to put you on an antibiotic. Think about that word, anti, against, biotic, life, against life, okay? It's there on purposely to get rid of the bad bacteria that cause the ulcer, see? Always treating the symptom. So he, he, he sure took care of the ulcer, didn't he? But this is against life. It, it's, it went in to, just to, to take care of the bad, but it doesn't say I'm only going after the bad. You know, it eliminates all bacteria, good and bad, okay? So you just, you just took away your immune system when you were on that antibiotic, okay? You know, I always ask how many people are on an antibiotic right now? And it's usually quite a lot. Some say, I, no, I haven't been on any antibiotic. And I'll say, do you eat meat? Yes, you know, if you eat chicken or beef, you, eat, you take antibiotics, okay? Unless you, you have your own cow out in the backyard and you know you haven't been injected with antibiotics, you know, or the chicken in the feed, you know, to fertilize it and stuff. Um, so when you, when you take antibiotics, see, you're just taking away your protection there, okay? See, so now the food still comes in here every day. Didn't mean just because I was on an antibiotic didn't mean I stopped eating, you know? So your body still goes to work and starts to create acid again. Still got to do this process. But see, without any protection there, yeah, have you ever got battery acid on your skin? It burns, it'll go right through your pants, you know? 
it burns. And so you go back to your doctor and say, I'm still in trouble here. I don't know. I thought it was an ulcer, but now I still, every time I eat, I've got this burning in my stomach. And he said, well, this is, it's the acid. You know, let's fix that. Let's put you on antacid. Okay, there we go. Now, now you're on Prilocet, Nexium, Tums, Rolaid, Zantac. You know, but all oh, yeah, see there's so many things. See, let's just get rid of the symptom again. Okay? See, now if he just puts you on a death state, you know, you, you you're gonna have problems. See, your food is coming into the system without cooked, oh with no enzymes. There's no acid because you keep taking it away. So the pancreas doesn't know anything's going on. So your food goes it's almost like a slippy slide. It's headed straight to the intestinal tract. Okay? If it gets past that point, you're, you're not getting any nutrition from it. It's sitting in your bowel and rotting, you know, and, and now you're going to have problems down here. You've lost your mucosal lining down there. So your food, basically, just because you're on that soda and different things, add about 18 hours to the amount of time that food will get processed now or sometimes longer. Pork, maybe three days, okay? So now, with everything sitting in my intestinal tract now, now you hear about colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, diverticulitis, Crohn's disease. How many people do you, you hear about? That's just becoming an epidemic today, you know? Um, and if you go to any book and you go to any library or go to, the, you go to your computer and Google Crohn's disease, you know, how do, how do you fix Crohn's disease? It says there is no cure for Crohn's disease because you go to 99 out of 100 doctors and say you have this, the two things that they're going to treat you with are the two things that causes it. Okay. Ask next time you're in the doctor's office, just say, "Doctor, I have an ulcer." It just you know, or if somebody had an ulcer, what would you give them? It's those two things. You know, and you're saying, "Well, doc, isn't that what causes it?" You know, and they're they're just speechless. You know, because they know that that's what causes it. You know, but that's how they do. That's how they treat it. Okay. So we do not want to go this place. We don't, we don't want to run our pancreas out of enzymes. We don't want to run ourselves out of probiotics, okay? Um, because that, that's going to create major problems, okay? And that's, that's what we're talking about with the blood. So when we're not digesting proteins, you know, I ate that meat, that hamburger that's cooked 13 years ago, you know, See, if I eat meat and it, I don't digest it and it goes to my bloodstream, remember we, we, we looked at the, the capillaries there, you know, here comes the red cell through here. You know, if I don't digest protein, the proteins that are all in the blood, it, the blood starts to get real thick and sticky. So if a red cell touches each other, they actually link together. That's the first picture, it's called protein linkage. The second stage is where the cells really start to pile on top of each other. Okay, that's the second picture on the thing. It's called rouleau. See that word rouleau? Rouleau is a French word that means a stacking of things. Like if I put a stack of quarters right here on the table, that's a rouleau of quarters. These cells, see, they can't get through. See, so rouleau, if you go to the bottom little, last little part of that paragraph, it says this condition produces symptoms of fatigue. Weakness, poor digestion, and edema. Edema, swelling, inflammation. You know, when you eat too much protein, all of a sudden you get just kind of stiff in the back and you're feeling achy and, you know, or your gout flares up or, you know, different things. It's because you didn't process that steak that you just ate. Okay? And now it's in the bloodstream. Let's just say, you know, that this is the liver here. Okay? And as the blood is flowing through, with all this protein. Let's just say that it's like a, a screen, you know, just like this, okay, a little colander screen, okay? So, see, if this fat all starts to build up, you know, eventually, see, it's just gonna completely, completely fill up the screen. I don't know how this is gonna work, but I, I, I am gonna try this. Let's just say, uh, I've never done this before, so we're gonna see. So let's just say that normal blood you know, see, it would just flow right through your liver, and when you go to the bathroom and things, things are just going to be pulled right on out, right? But let's say I'm squeezing some oranges, or I'm making some juice, you know, and I, and 
See, and I start to fill that up. You know, now, see, you know, if you if you just, you know, kept, kept going, see, it's just going to eventually fill up the screen. Okay? So your liver is kind of like uh, an air conditioning filter or your lint filter on your dryer, you know, or something like that. Once it's full, it's full. The liver has over 900 functions. So when you don't know what to do with your health, clean up the liver. You know, when you have psoriasis and eczema and acne and all these different things, focus on the liver. See, all that's just going to keep building up over time, build up, build up. And see, and if you can't get rid of it, it's going to reject it. It's going to send it back into the bloodstream. So I start to see too much fat which eventually creates cholesterol problems, plaquing and so on. I have too much sugars in the blood, you know, which creates blockage and so on. You know, um, I'm not digesting this protein and it's coming back into my bloodstream. It, now we see uric acid crystals forming. These get into my joints and form gout or sinus arthritis. Okay, see, so it's really all about how you're digesting it. You want the enzymes working for you. I'm going to show you another little example of, of enzymes and how important enzymes are here. You know, you, you're, you're seeing these little snack pack puddings, right? Uh, you know, pudding is just like anything else in a store. The grocery stores learned a long time ago that if they cook everything in the store, they can keep it on the shelf a long time. Okay? So this has a shelf life of March of 2013. So a whole nother year, this dairy food can sit unrefrigerated on the shelf next to the cereal for a whole year. Okay, what does that tell you? It's dead. It's it, there's no nothing there. Okay, um, Julio, would you come up and I'm gonna have Julio start stirring this one up. Okay, we're gonna take the other one. Uh, we're gonna take this other one here, and I'm gonna. Actually, open up a couple of digestive enzymes. We're going to put it into the, the pudding. So they've taken them out of the pudding. So I'm going to open up these little capsules, pour in the enzymes. Okay, and then I'm going to catch up to him here. You know, we're stirring that because when you eat stuff, your body actually, it's called peristaltic action. It, it stirs it and mixes it. And, you know, blends it up and tries to get it broken down, getting the enzymes thrown in there. Pancreas is secreting the enzymes in here. And hopefully things get digested. How's it going over there? Good. You know, animals are smart, but sometimes smarter than us. When they, when they, when you give your dog some dog food right from a can, he can't digest it, so he's going to go outside and eat a little bit of grass. You know, he's going to add some, some enzymes in there. You, you'll take your, you know, throw him a bone, and he'll take his little bone and Go in your backyard and dig a little hole in your yard and bury it. You know, the enzymes in the dirt will break that bone down and make it soft. So a week later when he comes back looking for it, now he can enjoy it. You know, if it's Sunday dinner and you got your chicken and mashed potatoes and green beans, see, everything's cooked on your plate. So, you know, you can either say, pancreas, help me out, or you can eat a pineapple or some tomato or some cucumbers or have a salad with your meal. You know, you want to help process that meal, okay? Thank you. Okay. So we're going to take his pudding that didn't have any enzymes. You can see didn't really change it any, did it? Okay. But when enzymes are present, you can see just in a couple of seconds, you know, it's gone. You know, and so it's not going to stay in my blood two, three, four hours to cause plaque or sugars or whatever. So. You know, it's your birthday, and you want that little piece of chocolate cake. You you say, okay, I'm going to enjoy that, but I'm going to process it. You know, I'm going to just take some enzymes with that meal, and then it's not going to give me a problem. Okay, it's not going to stay in my blood and create this this backup system. Okay, that's so common today. Okay, so you see the importance of enzymes. Pretty pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Okay. Um, when digestion isn't happening here really good, we, we kind of have a backup system. That's called our adrenal glands. Okay? You have two little triangle shaped organs on top of both kidneys. And they, they go to work when, when the body's like stressed 
physical stress or emotional stress again. Um, but most of the time, we live on a physical stress, okay? Um, what I mean by that is a lot of people, they get up in the morning and they crawl out of bed and the first direction they head is to the coffee pot, you know? Now they got some energy. Now they feel good. Now I can get to work, you know? Or they stop at the Circle K and get them a monster drink or a donut or a Red Bull, something, and they think, okay, now I've got some energy. But see, what that is, is your adrenal, that energy is your adrenal saying, you just put poison into my body. I'm going to speed up your metabolism. I'm going to produce an adrenaline hormone to speed up my metabolism to get that out. Okay? And, and so the enzymes aren't doing it, so that's your backup system. See, so people are running on this adrenaline hormone. Uh, one of the tests that Robert does during his, his uh, testing in there is, is on the, this back page, right in this last page on the inside, you'll see it's called the Raglan's test. We have a little uh, chiropractic bed thing in there that you, you lay down on. And you see, you check your blood pressure laying down, you stand up within 10 seconds, and you recheck it again, okay? Your systolic pressure, the high number, so let's say it was 120 over 80 laying down, and then you stood up and that 120 went to now 125 or 130, you know? See, if you go over to the side here, it should, be, oh, it should never move more than four points. See, if it was 120 laying down and you stood up and it was 122, you're normal. If it goes up 10 points, that's called a hyperactive adrenal. Okay? Um, if you can't find it, we'll show you after. But um, if it goes up over 14 points, now you're in trouble. Okay? Now your body is not going to just be producing lots of adrenaline hormone, but it's going to produce cortisol. Cortisol is your worst nightmare. Cortisol eats muscle. Okay? So now you're in what's called a catabolic state. You're actually eating yourself. Okay? Um, muscle burns fat. Okay? So if you're eating muscle, all your body can do is store fat. Okay? And think about the first place that that blood is going back to with the cortisol in it is your heart to pump it out again. You know? And so the heart gets hit with the cortisol first and it's a huge muscle. Okay? It gets weakened. So you're going to have reduced cardiac output. You're going to have hypertension, heart arrhythmia. You know, you're going to be dealing with some major problems. Okay? People like the Atkins diets and these, the, all the diets that you see on the market. When we do somebody's adrenal test that they're on these high, these kind of proteins and different things that you see today, their adrenal is usually about 40 or 50 points difference from laying down to standing up. Okay? So they think they're losing a lot of weight. But they're losing muscle. Okay, the minute they go off that diet, they reach their 30-pound goal. They're going to gain back twice as much as what they just lost because now they don't have the muscle to to take care of that. And their adrenals are going on vacation. They were way overworked for a long time. Okay, and so see, it, it's not the, the right direction. You want to get nutrition working for you. You want to make sure your adrenals. To me, that's a key to weight loss. You know, make sure your your adrenals are supported and strengthen and back to normal here. Sometimes the adrenals are just right at capacity and they're burning out. They're, they're maxed out for a long time and all of a sudden it's just like a light switch flips off. And one day they're working like 20 points, 30 points, 40 points over and the next day it goes from 120 to 110 or 105 or 100. That's, that's a decline. That's fatigue. Okay, That's called chronic fatigue. Epstein-Barr, lupus, you know, fibromyalgia, all those declining, not digesting things are going on, okay? So, lots of things that we can, we can see when things are going wrong. See, so nothing's happening. We're, we're calling on our body. We're, we're feeling bad. We're tired. We're fatigued. We go to our doctor and he says, you need some supplements. You know, go to the store and get you some vitamins. You know, you go to the store scratching your head going which one of these are good for me like what we talked about at the beginning you know you're, you're shaking your head you're going there's 15 different vitamin c's on the market right there you know they all say a thousand milligrams that doesn't help well this one says natural this one doesn't so well that sounds a little bit better well this one's two dollars this is twenty dollars and i'll take the two dollar one you know 
and away we go. You know, you should always turn it around to the supplemental facts part and say vitamin C. Let's see, a good source of vitamin C would be a, an orange, you know, or rose hips, you know. But this says vitamin C has ascorbic acid. Well, there's no such thing as an ascorbic acid plant, you know. That's, that's, that's corn syrup and hydrochloric acid mixed together. This is a study that was done a few years ago, and uh, this actually, the study was reported in the Los Angeles Times newspaper right here, okay? They took a group of 573 men and women in the Los Angeles area. They, they um, put them on, uh, well, they brought them into the University of California, USC, they performed an ultrasound in the carotid artery in the neck. And then they administered 500 milligrams of vitamin C ascorbic acid for six months. Then they brought them back in and they says they re-evaluated re them. Um, six months later, the inner artery wall averaged 2.5 times thicker than six months before. And among the smoking group, it was five times thicker. See, so an artery wall, the opening of the artery wall was pretty big, but see, Six months later, okay, you're putting six, a thousand milligrams of vitamin C is basically 938 milligrams of corn syrup you're putting into your blood, okay, every day. You're just dumping sugar in your bloodstream, okay. That's not what you want to be doing. You want to be eating an orange. Let's just say, here's a vitamin C, okay, thousand milligrams of vitamin C, okay. Let's say your vitamin does say ascorbic acid on the, on the label. Um, I'll always remember those three little letters on the end of a word, okay? Like if it says citrate, nitrate, phosphate, chromium picolinates, bromates, aspartates, carbonates, sulfates, you know, you know that it's a synthetic, a chemical made vitamin, okay? If this, if this is a thousand milligrams, your body will only absorb about 7% of this vitamin. Let's, let's take that up to 10%. So you absorb 10% of that. The other 90% is going to be depleted from your body to make this a whole food again. Okay? It needs the other cofactors. It's called bioflavonoids. Uh, the rutin. K and J factors, all the other pieces, it's going to pull from you, your collagen tissues, your bones, to make this a whole food or it can't be absorbed on a cellular level, okay? So if you deplete yourself of 90% to just get that little 10%, that didn't sound very good, uh, you know? So you, you know, one, let's say that this is 100 milligrams you got out of that, you're basically, you're pretty, pretty much probably only gonna get 70. One orange has 70, to, to 70 milligrams of vitamin C in it. Eat an orange. You'll get the same amount as that 1,000 milligrams of ascorbic acid, okay? So that's, that's something that we, we don't want either, okay? That's what, that's what that study is proving right there. One story, um, and I'll show you a picture of her after. I forgot to bring it up. Um, Actually, my book's in on my bed. My degree. Um, several years ago, I was in New York doing Wesley Snipes' blood. Okay, this one night, and it got pretty late in the night. And he he said, you know what? I have this this uh, my grandmother. She she lives down in Orlando, Florida, and here's a picture of her here. He said she lives down in Orlando, Florida. Last week, they brought her home from the hospital. And they don't give her uh, much. So here's, I'll pass this around. So here's her name's Ida May. Okay, Ida May is 83 years old. No, 80. Yeah, 87 years old. She was 87 years old at this point. Okay. They said she's had uh, 17 different stents put in. She's had two bypass surgeries. And today, they said she's too weak. She wouldn't make it through another surgery, so they're gonna, they're gonna let her go. So they brought her home, they brought in hospice. They're saying maybe two days. You know, This is like a Tuesday, they figured she'd be gone Thursday or Friday. And he said, is it too late to help my grandma? And I just said, well, you know, obviously the doctors gave up on her, but you know, 
this is what I would do. I would say it's never too late. Why would you just turn it off, you know? And so I said, this is what I do, and I laid it all out. You know, and I thought this is what enzymes would do, and this would clean up the liver, and we'd go after this and this and this. And he said, that sounds good to me. He said, we're going to go down there. So the next morning, we got on a flight, and we flew to Florida, and we get over to her house, and she was in bed. The nurse lets us in, and we go back to her room, and she, you could tell, she's very feeble, ready to go. And uh, I, I sat down by her, and I said, you know, I may said, what have you been kind of taking as far as medications? And she said, see that basket sitting over there? And I went and got the basket, and she, I went through, and she was on 15 different prescription medications for thinning the blood, okay? And a bunch of other things to side effects of those things. And I said, well, that's weird. That's a mute point because they've taken you off and everything. So let, let me just ask you, what have you been doing on, as far as your diet? Obviously, you're on a very, very strict diet. You know, you can't be 96% blocked in your arteries and not be putting it in. And she just said, well, Randy, my doctor never said what I should eat or not eat. And I said, you got to be kidding. I said, there's where you went wrong. You should have got a different doctor right there. I said, because you can't be 96% blocked in your carotid artery right there and not be putting it in. So I, I had her list what she would eat every morning and lunch and dinner, kind of on an average day. And she'd go through and have her get up in the morning, have fried eggs, fried bacon, you know, for lunch is fried okra, fried catfish, fried chicken. You know, it was just the southern, you know, fried foods, you know. And I just said, I said, Ida May, that just can't happen. And I looked over on her kitchen stove. She had a Folgers coffee can full of grease that she would scrape out, fry her bacon, and pour it back in, and fry her chicken, and pour it back in, and just keep reusing that grease. And I go, that can is death right there. That's, what, that's why you're laying in bed today. And I just said, You've had your 87 years of fun today. You just got cut off. You no more fun, you know. And I said, this is what we're going to do. And I put her on the program. And I said, if you do this, I promise you, you, you will not die in 102 more days. And I kind of was telling her this, and I knew, noticed she was just crying. And she just kind of scolded me. She said, how can you sit there and tell me that? And I said, because I know that what I can do, and I know I can turn you around. That picture you took, looked at right there, that was taken six months after I met her. She wasn't taking a single medication at that point. She lives almost seven more years, okay, in her late 90s or early mid 90s. She passed away about a year and a half ago, at, at, and she she was looked like she was 70 again, okay. Her doctors made her come in and get a flu shot. She was she caught pneumonia within the, the next day and died three days later after the shot. Okay, completely just wiped her out, just like that, okay? Three days later, she was gone from after that shot. And so, I, she should be alive today. She, she would be, I know she would be. But you can totally see people's life changing, you know, um, just on a daily basis. That you, people come in with all kinds of problems. Things like Crohn's disease, that they say there's no cure. I've never treated a person with Crohn's that I haven't, okay? What about fibromyalgia? It's the same thing. You can, that's an enzyme issue. 